All right, let's get right into the recap today. Uh, so I traded one ticker KSCP, and today's video is going to be pretty important because it's going to be talking about how anticipating trades can absolutely ruin a great trade. And you know, in this trade for myself, I totally chopped myself up on my first trades on it, and it cost me um, a great trade. You know, so. I managed to get a really nice trade on it eventually, but because of those anticipation trades, I took several losses on it, which totally wiped out the good trade that I eventually nailed on it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. So, so the realistic side of trading is, uh, you know, you're not going to have these perfect trades every single time, you know, you're not going to be nailing the top or nailing the bottoms and, uh, you know, flawless trades, stuff like that. You know, you're going to have days where you're just, uh, you know, you're not in the zone. Maybe you didn't sleep well, or maybe you got stuff on your mind and you're just not zoned in and focused hundred percent on the day. And that's where errors like this will come in. So if we can analyze the trades we took, we can see here. So my first entry right off the bat, and I knew this going into it, I knew this was a chase entry. I knew that I'm shorting into a support level anticipating that it's going to break and i know that if it doesn't break we're going to have a bounce and it's probably going to hold and that's exactly what we see here so the stock held this 25 level i was anticipating a break of that level i got in a starter position there it bounced pretty pretty strongly there uh, and then i added on confirmation here once i saw that that bounce fail and at this point i'm in my position now so full position there and it held the support level again, this 25 level. And I could see that I could recognize that while I was trading it, I could see it in the tape, uh, but I still decided to hold and follow my plan. And that's when I got stopped out. That was the first trade. So it stopped me out right there. Again, I took a short, I re-entered, not waiting for confirmation again, anticipating it's going to fail. And once again, it held the level, came back, boom, stopped me out. And then I eventually, you can see, I caught a nice, nice win on it, a nice short entry and kind of wrote it, uh, wrote it down there. Um, but I want to go over this area specifically because this is where all the errors, which were totally avoidable. Uh, this is where all of the errors occurred. And the big thing here is, you know, why do we, why do we anticipate trades? What's the main reason? And, you know, at least for me, myself, it's FOMO, right? your your fear of missing the trade so why anybody would short here when it hasn't confirmed it broke support the only reason is FOMO you don't want to miss the trade and that's exactly why I entered there albeit it was a smaller position just a starter but still it's I knew it was a terrible entry um, I wasn't wait I wasn't waiting for the confirmation you know I knew I was jumping the gun there and sure enough it had a nice bounce which could have been a nicer entry just simply waiting for a bounce. But as we can see in this range, I basically did the opposite of what I needed to be doing to make money as a trader. So as a trader, what are the best entries? Buying near support and selling near resistance, right? Well, if we look here, I was doing the complete opposite. I was shorting low, so selling low and covering high, buying into the, into the resistance levels. And the reason for that is because I had a terrible entry and, you know, the risk reward didn't make sense for me to hold on to these positions into these uh, bounce moves. So I had to cut them off for losers. Now, if I was trading a lot smaller, perhaps I could have used just used one entry, perhaps and a wider stop, maybe let's say like 20, maybe the high of the day. Um, but again, that was that risk would have been a bit too wide for me as well. Uh, just the risk reward wouldn't have made much sense. To me there so so what was the best way to trade this this area um, for me I probably would have been better off just you know avoiding it you know waiting for the confirmation so the confirmation would be either you see a potential rip towards high of the day and it just gets stuffed as we saw here or you short the break of the support level that's been holding so this break of $25 as you can see, if you just waited for this level to break, would have been a stress-free short, right? 
Uh, now it would have been wouldn't have been the best risk reward trade, you know, because you are still chasing. I mean, you can see this candle. We can see the candle here went kind of like uh, straight from 26 bucks down straight through 25. So you'd have to risk at least a buck a share there. Um, but look how stress free the trade was after that, right? So you say you entered at 25, you got the stress free trigger. Um, you know, you know it's a support level. You know that you know longs are gonna bail and you're using that dollar per share risk and it never really came back or you know retested that level so that would probably have been the most stress-free trade now would have would it have been the best entry probably not you know there's probably better risk reward entries such as you know shorting up here the rejection of this this 27 level and as you can see i kind of got short a little bit late there um uh, but it is what it is. Um, you know, the trade ended up working out pretty nicely. So the key lesson I want to go over with this trade is you can have a really nice trade on a stock. As we see here, I nailed this short here, you know, covered all the way down, re-added my position here perfectly. Nice flush, cover, cover, cover. Re-added again right into this uh, resistance level as we can see these prior support levels usually become resistance and and this candle you can see they faked out a bunch of shorts there and then just absolutely liquidated into there and you know nice stress-free trade all the way down so this is the back side of the trade and that's the easiest short trades you're going to get if you're just simply waiting for the back side sure you may not be getting the best entry you know i think a lot of People love to get really, really good entries, and that's what creates the FOMO, right? Including for myself, I, I always like to get a higher entry. You know, I always want to be that guy that's kind of got the, the best entry. And in reality, in trading, if you try to guess tops and bottoms, you're, you're going to get screwed most of the time. So you don't have to guess the top. You don't have to guess the bottom. All you have to do is take the meat of the move, and that's what creates consistency. So a uh, big lesson for me here is, you know, I don't do this too often, but it, it does happen. Um, anticipating and FOMO, you know, trying to get in, trying to get ahead of the trade. And that just doesn't work, especially in this market when, when you have slow, sorry, low, uh, low liquidity tickers like this, uh, which are very spready and can easily go against you in a matter of, you know, split seconds. So so other than that um what else can we take away from here i think this just goes to show again you know most traders already know this but timing is really everything you can have the right idea on a ticker you can be dead right by the end of the day but if you're not timing it right you can get you know swiped up chopped up you know plenty of times before they finally let it go and and let it trend in your direction so I really think confirmation, you know, waiting for confirmation is, is really key. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with anticipating. Don't get me wrong. You can anticipate trades and still, you know, do fantastic. But perhaps maybe scale into those trades if you're anticipating. So if you're thinking, hey, this, this thing might break 25 bucks, instead of just one-shotting it and going all in your position, take a small starter, you know, one-tenth of your size and slowly add and add as you see that confirmation uh, building and confirming your thesis so you know if you were in this position let's say you took a tiny 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 starter here and then you just sat through all this chop you could afford to sit through all this uh, range because you're in such a small position right maybe perhaps using that high of the day as stop even if you shorted here as a starter you can still be totally comfortable risking this this wide risk um, and then scaling into your position as it confirms your thesis so as you see this looking like it's about to break high the day you got your starter on and as you see that rejection come in you see that big flush candle that's when you can add all your all the rest of your position and and maybe wait for that last uh, confirmation of the 25 crack to add a bit more and then you can use that uh, that 27 or 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 possibly even the 26 area as risk uh, once it breaks that support 
So you can kind of adjust your risk as the trade works out. Now, for me personally, I don't really like to trade that way. It's just not my style. Uh, I prefer that one or two entries, um, you know, just keeping it simple, keeping it basic. If the liquidity is there to, to take the entry all at once, I prefer to do that. But, you know, sometimes it is better to scale in and, uh, you know, adjust your position and your risk as the trade plays out. Um, and I'm trying to do that more and more. I'm trying to work on that more. Um, it's, it's a bit difficult because that's not my style of trading. That's not how I was used to trading when I first started learning. Um, but I think it can be very beneficial, especially on tickers like this that have such wide volatility and range because you can get yourself chop just like we see here and it can ruin your ruin a great trade and ruin a great day so um yeah so not not happy with this uh trading here um really happy with this short trade but again because of this it wasn't a green i was not green on the ticker because of these uh dumb mistakes uh so they can add up right it may not look like much here but yeah those losses can definitely add up and ruin a great day so that's the lesson for today, guys. Uh, hope you took something from it, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.